I was interested in being a war journalist specifically in the Middle East and I started learning Arabic and studying photography and I kind of just realized that there was more issues here that I wanted to address more so than someone else's issues and I was terrible at Arabic. Yeah, our family's from here originally, Afghani heritage, so from Adelaide and most of my white family here were early colonists so it's for me just like perfect for me looking at history. For the body of work that I'm making for the festival I was collecting Australian native and New Zealand native plants to talk about Joseph Banks influence on the colonization of Australia. I think he gathered about 150 different specimens just out of Botany Bay and after his trip with Cook in 1770 he worked with the king to choose a place where the British could colonise. You know, we didn't really understand what we looked like until we had the mirror. And then to have a photograph on a mirror and then how we see ourselves in that and how we see our history is really interesting. I mean, there's been a lot of theory written about the daguerreotype. I like it because of its historical aesthetic. And I think it puts people in the time and the subject that you're trying to address. Would the daguerreotype take an hour for the image to fully appear? And when it works, it's beautiful watching it the whole way. And because it's such a fragile image, at any point you could touch, accidentally touch the surface and the image is gone. I think visual arts allows you to articulate these complex issues a lot easier and in a way that still is ambiguous, but it does get straight to the core of what you're trying to communicate. So I guess that's why I use it as like a political medium. There's always that statement that art doesn't really change the world, but I don't know, maybe I'm stupid and I think you can. <laughs>